as Lieutenant Colonel George Andrew Davis Jr. flew through the skies of Korea on February 10, 1952. He most likely figured it would just be another day in the life of an American fighter pilot during the Korean War. It was unlikely that he thought that this day would etch his name into immortality. George Andrew Davis Jr. was born at an inflection point in history. December 1st, 1920. Unknown to him that this would be on his 21st birthday, the United States as well as the rest of the world would be locked in a horrific world war. On December 7th, 1941, the United States was attacked, by Pearl Har- was attacked at Pearl Harbor by the Empire of Japan. The sneak attack sh- sent shockwaves through the United States and the world, thrusting the U.S. into the already violent world conflict. George Andrew Davis Jr. joined the Army Air Corps in 1942 and by 1943 was in the Pacific Theater flying with the 342nd Fighter Squadron where he flew the P-47 Thunderbolt. The P-47 was beloved by its pilots and even its enemies. German pilots remarked that the P-47 could absorb a lot of damage and still keep going. With, 50, with eight 50 caliber cannons and the ability to carry rockets and 2,500 pounds of bombs, it made for a formidable aerial foe and perfect light escort bomber. After flight school, the newly minted 2nd Lieutenant George Andrew Davis Jr. was assigned to the 342nd Fighter Squadron and sent to the Pacific Theater where he excel, excelled. Stationed outside of Papua New Guinea, he engaged the Japanese in aerial combat and escort missions for American bombing missions on Japanese forces. As the Americans hopped from island to island, pushing Japan back further into the Pacific. It was during World War II that gained Davis immediate notoriety. He earned ace status with seven confirmed kills and came home in 1945 with a silver star, a distinguished flying cross, and the air medal. However, it was during the Korean War where George Andrew Davis Jr. would be etched into history. After returning home, the world's air forces had drastically changed. Planes that were prevalent throughout World War II were being replaced with faster, more powerful jet aircraft. To gain air superiority, every major power began to train pilots on the new planes. It was during this post-war period between World War II and the Korean conflict that American pilots honed their craft on one of the newest and best fighter planes in the world, the F-86 Sabre. The F-86 Sabre was a swept-wing fighter plane with four front cannons and the capability of carrying missiles, rockets, and even nuclear bombs, which were now a necessity in post-World War II warfare. The Soviets countered with the, Mi- countered with the MiG-15. Both planes were incredibly similar in design and structure and featured massive air intake hole at the front of the aircraft. The Americans had a distinct advantage. While the MiG was comparable in many ways to the F-86, American pilots proved to have a massive upper hand against their Korean, Chinese, and Soviet counterparts in the Korean Air War. Pilots, like George Andrew Davis Jr., among others, simply transitioned to the new new aircraft and took to the skies in Korea. Many American pilots had already seen thousands of hours of combat in Germany and Japan throughout the Second World War. This experience led to the Americans gaining the upper hand in the air war in Korea. The Korean War was also at the tail end of the famous aerial dogfighting era of World War II. Air forces began to realize that trading plane for plane in the sky was counterintuitive, and Davis found himself in one of these situations on February 10, 1952, as he patrolled the skies as an escort fighter along the Korean Manchurian border in an area known as Ming as known as Mig Valley. Mig Alley. During this engagement, Davis spotted a squadron of MiG 15s heading towards American bombers. By this time, Davis had already accum- accumulated 12 more kills in Korea and gained A status once again. As Davis st- dived straight into the attacking MiGs, he scored two more kills off the bat. 
In the chaotic dogfight that ensued, his plane suffered a direct hit, and he was a as he was attacking a third MiG. His F-86 spiraled and tumbled into the mountains of North Korea. His death was claimed by three different pilots. Ultimately, a Chinese pilot took final credit for shooting down, arguably, one of America's all-time fighter pilots. Sadly, Davis's body was never recovered. It was not long after Davis's exploits were recognized. His bold actions that day saved the bombers from what could have been a massive disaster. He was awarded the Distinguished Service Cross, the United States military's second highest honor, a second silver star, and another cluster in his Distinguished Flying Cross, and a ninth cluster onto his Air Medal. But it was the Medal of Honor that he was posthumously awarded by the United States and is the most important recognition of valor and courage. The epitaph on his award states, quote, conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty. Davis became of one of 19 Air Force members who have received the military's highest honor for bravery. As an additional honor, he was posthumously promoted to lieutenant colonel. By the end of the Korean War, he had racked up 14 total kills. Although his body was never found, a memorial grave site was established as a symbolic resting site in the city of Lubbock Cemetery near his hometown.